Um, I'm very happy to be here and to, uh, to talk about private networks. Um, within, within Telefonica Germany, I own everything on the t uh, uh, technology side that we built for, uh, for business customers. And that goes from, from fixed network, mobile network, and IT and network. So it covers the full enchilada, and I have to say, um, private network is the most exciting topic, and uh, the, uh, because of that, I'm really happy to, to talk about that here. Um, guaranteed robust connectivity in every corner of factories is going to be a real game changer for our customers. Uh, and I think private network is the essential bit to actually enable that. And this is important to keep in our mind that the step change and the game changer is so big for our customers. And I will explain a bit later what that means in the market. And I will explain a bit um, about how we currently see the market and what we do in the market. Currently, what, what we see in the market we roughly estimate that there are approximately 100, 120, 150 mobile uh, private networks in Germany uh, installed. That's, an, that's a rough estimation. And we estimate that this is going to grow something like factor five or seven within the next three years. So it's significant, and the market is going to grow very, very heavily. Uh, so I think in, in the ecosystem that we are all into, uh, just growing that ecosystem is going to be beneficial for, uh, for all of us. Most of our installations that we currently see is, is basically proof of concept or test installations. And only slowly st we are st starting to see currently shifting to the first one or two or three commercial installations. But this is a relatively slow, um, uh, this is a slow move. If we compare it to the rest of Europe, we think that Germany is pretty, pretty dynamic and pretty, pretty good, good, uh, good ahead. Um, certainly, if we, if we heard the numbers earlier from China, uh, there being um, uh, private networks, the numbers of thousands of already we heard 3,000 mobile networks, uh, private networks being, being installed commercially. So that is a different number. But we think the potential in, in Europe and in Germany is, is, is huge. Um, if we look at the, the number of solutions of core private networks that are currently there from all of us from the, from the vendor ecosystems in the end, this is pretty heavy. Yeah, we have, we, have, um, we have all the traditional big telco vendors already in the market. They provide their solutions. Um, but on top of that, we have a lot of smaller, uh, smaller players uh, providing solution, core solutions. We have the hyperscalers entering into the, that market, so Microsoft and AWS entering that market, and we have a lot of other vendors. So, so I would say if I wanted to choose a core for a private network, I could currently, I could choose already from 10 to 20 different solutions that are there on the market. And on top of that, there is for the use cases, there's always a lot of system integrators and providers for the solution, uh, uh, solutions that have to be integrated with, uh, with those cores. Um, devices, you might be aware, it's, uh, it's only slowly picking up that we have devices that are, uh, that are fitting there. And the customers are, are pretty much, like I said, they're pretty much in the, in the testing currently. They're, they're trying to understand, okay, what, what is it going to deliver to me? What features can I enable? Which use cases are, are relevant? That's the state of the market that we, that we currently see. In, in use cases, I mean, the, um, uh, the use cases that we see for the different verticals and the different industries, this is a huge list. This is hundreds of use cases, and I see long catalogs of potential use cases that can be done with, with private networks. Nevertheless, whenever we talk to customers, I think there's four or five main use cases that typically always are discussed and always are the most relevant ones. So the first one we typically talk about is remote expert. So this is, you, you have a video stream that you provide from, from your glasses or from, from a tablet or something, you, you provide to a remote helper who can then on facilities help and, and actually do the training or do maintenance work or, or something, something similar. So this you can only do with a re reliable connectivity with, uh, with good enough bandwidth and, and, and latency. 
the, the second big use case that we typically see is auto, uh, AGVs, so autonomous uh, vehicles. Currently in the factories, very often a relatively static thing. So, so the vehicles going on certain lanes, uh, a, a dedicated static, uh, uh, a static thing that is happening. And with private networks, we can bring in a lot more dynamic into, into those vehicles. The next one is positioning. Positioning, a, a very important use case, always being asked for. And um, certainly there is an industry where we have to, to move a bit because position is not good enough and it's evolving over the next, uh, next uh, current, current month and, and years and releases. And, and then there's certainly the use cases like um, getting a digi uh, digital twin is a, uh, is a big one and getting sensor data from, from sensors and actually pushing software to ro robotics or, or any, ma any machines. You know, this, is, this is the big, the, the big use cases that we see that are always repeatedly uh, coming from, from all, the different, uh, all the different customers. The, the big verticals, the big industries that are currently mostly showing interest already in private networks, this is certainly the, uh, the user suspects, I would say. I mean, it's automotive, it's manufacturing, it's logistics as well, it's health, um, R&D, and, uh, and uh, uh, logistics I mentioned. So these are basically the main, um, uh, uh, the main branches interested in private networks already, trying to evaluate them. And um, what, what we see there is that for all of those verticals, um, we pretty early see discussions about cases that we can't solve with only an, an isolated on-premise installation. So like I said, we currently have most of the time we have isolated on test installations currently on premise with a dedicated, uh, a dedicated installation on, uh, in, in, in a factory. But when we talk about those, those industries that I was just talking about, very near the use cases come where you need either the public network or you need multi-site installations or you even need installations where you have, um, uh, uh, have one installation serving multiple, uh, multiple customers. Um, and this is very important because it's another dynamic that, that, that we as an industry pose to the customers, which is the architecture setup that we are going to provide in, in, in our solutions. And I will show that a bit, uh, a bit later as well. And in, in the different dimensions that I'm showing here, um, the, if we have the projects, every project looks different currently. Yeah? So, so every single project is demanding something, something else. And the customers very often need quite a lot of consulting and help in addressing the different, the different topics that are uh, talked about. So roadmap and features are already said. I mean, this is, this is I mean, uh, customers are asking, for example, for higher precision in the position, positioning, which is only coming later. They're asking for other devices that are currently not in the market. Um, they want a lot of know-how because they don't have any mobile network know-how in the companies typically. And it's a comp completely new setup that they have in, in, uh, 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 in their companies. They, they ask themselves, is there going to be a business case? Will, will they invest to actually fund the, uh, uh, be, be funded by the business case? And they want to understand actually which partners are, are long-term actually the ones that, that are going to serve and to talk, talk with them together. So for the customers, it's really a new, it's a new environment that they need to understand and which is pretty, uh, pretty complex. Um, let me talk a bit about one project that, uh, that we did specifically. And this is a, an installation that we did in, uh, uh, actually for the Freistadt Sachsen in, in Leipzig. Um, the Freistadt Sachsen has an initiative eHealth uh, e Sachs. And uh, there we installed, uh, together with our partners, uh, iConnect and Huawei, we installed in the Helios facilities, in the Helios Live Clinic, 50 rooms with a private network, and um, uh, uh, did that in four months. And it was um, actually, it was a very, very interesting bit because we had to integrate into the uh, clinic day-to-day -day work. And now it's there and is um, the, the philosophy of that, of that initiative from the Freistaat is actually to attract the, um, that the healthcare manufacturers to come there and test their solutions into, in a live environment. And that's very interesting because 
Um, this is not a laboratory or, or, not, or not a theoretical exercise, but you can really test your devices in the live clinic day-to-day -to -day -to -day -to -day work. And, uh, and typically, quite, quite interestingly, the, the use cases that are being discussed are not the technology-wise uh, technology most advanced use cases, but often relatively basic use cases uh, technology-wise, but good for the business case. So, for example, you can you can imagine uh, just getting monitoring data from uh, from uh, 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 from any machine in the in the clinic, avoiding a nurse running a long aisle, uh, knowing where your beds are. So there is tons of I would say technology-wise not so advanced use cases, but very very relevant for the for the customers. First use case that we that we enabled is on positioning. There we, there we have a positioning um, uh, a solution which is actually in the accuracy around uh, a meter, and that is good enough in for locating the room. So you know already where the devices are in which room, and that is for the clinic. This is very good and good enough. Uh, so. Now the next step is attracting more and more of those uh, uh, health uh, uh, healthcare providers and actually to evolve those use cases and see if the theory that, uh, that everybody is having in the laboratories is actually standing firm in the day-to-day -day work. Uh, so very interesting, very interesting project and uh, we're happy to, to have that investment and uh, uh, the support from, from the partners. Um, if I'm looking at the industry industry in total, so um, I think over the next couple of years, in the different dimensions, there will be an unbelievable dynamic in there. I, I already talked about devices a bit. I said, okay, currently there's a low number of really devices available, but this is going to explode over the next years. Yeah? And, and certainly, first, it's going to be general purpose devices, but then it's going to be industry-specific devices dedicated like the, uh, the, 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 the torch with the, with the SIM card in there, um, and this is going to, to explode. Number of sites, typically, currently, single-site installations, but already talks how do I do my second factory? How do I do something that is in a different country? So, so a lot of the, uh, complexity coming there. Supplier landscape, I said, uh, quite a lot of companies in, uh, 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 playing in that field. Features, features we heard already in the morning, uh, features being enabled with the next releases, very relevant for the customers. Architectures. Architectures currently on premise, just single. That's the most uh, 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 the most uh, so, uh, used architecture currently, but it's it's going to be it's going to be different architectures as well. It's going to be architectures that that enable uh, uh, the public network as well with roaming or slicing use cases even. Um, and it can be, uh, we, we are thinking that there will be the necessity for cloud-based uh, cloud installations actually for, uh, for private networks. And then certainly if you look at the life cycle of a project in, in plan, build, run, we, we as Telefonica, we like to own end-to-end -end the responsibility towards the customer because then the customer knows who, who is responsible for, for everything. But certainly we are, um, we are tapping into existing ecosystems within the customers. Yeah? So, so the customers already have companies that, that do system integration. They have companies that do their current networking. They have companies uh, who do sometimes operations even. Um, and there we have to be flexible. Um, and I think we as an industry overall have to be very flexible because so much is changing currently. And when I was thinking about this, about the, the state of, of the market currently in, and all this complexity that goes, that is actually, that is shown and the customer sees that complexity, um, I'm comparing that a bit to the cloud market on the IT side, how it was something like 10 years ago. Yeah? On the IT side, if you've been talking about cloud 10 years ago, people were asking themselves, okay, um, it's interesting. Why do I need it? Um, does it provide benefit? Is there a business case? Um, I can do everything without cloud. I, could, I don't need cloud, um, but it's still exciting. So that was 10 years ago. Now, if you talk at least on the IT side about cloud, 
most of the time you don't talk about um, uh, uh, don't talk about the business case anymore. The business case is a byproduct. Um, but what cloud enabled is cloud enabled decoupling the hardware from the software, and because of that, you have a different innovation cycle and different speed uh, that you can enable on software without actually looking at six, six month ordering of, of hardware innovation. Yeah? So that is the, uh, what, what cloud enabled. And I think on, on private networks, we're exactly in the same situation. So the questions that we are getting from the customers is exactly those, those, those questions. Yeah? It's um, why do I need it? Is there a business case? And so on. And I think private networks are going to deliver the same thing that, that cloud is delivering just for connectivity. So currently in the setups for the customers, we have relatively, in the factories, we have relatively static setups. We have actually, we have, um, we have a, um, a certain use cases, certain layouts in the factories and um, for this, the customer build the, actually the connectivity that is there. But once they want to do, be a bit more dynamic in the factory, so actually want to change or different use cases, they always have a connectivity project that they need to do. Yeah? And with private networks, we change that. We decouple the connectivity from, from the use cases. Um, and with a general purpose, uh, purpose network, we basically enable different innovation cycles and far faster innovation on both. So I think this is really a, it's large complexity, but if we solve that as an industry, it's really a game changer. Like cloud was, was a game changer. I think connectivity everywhere reliably and with a very good, um, uh, uh, um, a very good general purpose attributes is really that, uh, that game changer. Um, we as, as Telefonica, we are certainly, we would be, we would be happy to actually to, I'm talking about the ecosystem because I think it's all about the ecosystem. We like to, to navigate the different partners and the ecosystem. We like to navigate for the customers. We would like to navigate the different architectures because that's pretty complex. And we'd like to, to navigate the full life cycle where actually most importantly, when the customer invests now, they want to ensure that the, it's future-proof invest, yeah? that not in one or two years actually uh, the, the effort can be thrown away, but, but actually that it's, uh, that's a relevant invest into, into the future. So I think it's a challenge for us as an industry to, to, to solve this complexity for the customers, but when we do that, I think the market will explode and will be huge and for all of our partners, I think that we can really, really tap into those markets there. So I would, uh, this is the philosophy of us, we would always like to, to grow the market and grow the ecosystem there. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Jan. So are there direct questions for Mr. Bush? Not for the moment, so I would have one. Um, as a technology journalist, I'm obviously always interested in what's coming next. And uh, you mentioned that some of your customers are really waiting for the benefits that the next 5G release, release 18, would bring them. Could you elaborate a little on that? What kind of uh, applications and, and um, KPIs that would be? The most important there is the positioning. Uh, mm -hmm. Positioning I hear most often. Um, because currently uh, we, we are with some effort, we are in this meter precision, but uh, th that's not good enough for the customers. They, they, uh, you might have heard about the use cases of a screwdriver being just knowing the position and by that just, just knowing what to do, um, but for this you need centimeter precision and this is something that we urgently need. Uh, um. Okay, I learned this morning in the main track that it is on the way, so. It is. Yeah. We won't have mm -hmm. to wait much longer for that. Thanks very much for your insights.